Hi, my name is Mark Castro. I'm an assistant professor of archaeology and anthropology at Longwood University. Yeah, I started in archaeology as an undergraduate uh, at Rutgers University, where my advisor was Carmel Schreier. And so taking classes with her was a lot of fun. And uh, her book, Digging Through Darkness, had just recently be been published. So there was a lot of excitement about what she was doing and what she was writing about. So uh, that was that really definitely caught my attention. Um, I sort of came to it late. Uh, historical archaeology late. Uh, I was thinking I was going to do paleoanthropology, which is what Rutgers was particularly strong with at the time. Um, but then, you know, I met Carmel and took her classes and um, I really thought it was a lot of fun and something interesting to do. And she really started encouraging her students that if they really wanted to pursue historical archaeology, they had to come to Virginia. Because uh, that's, uh, you know, James Fort had just been uh, rediscovered. Um, uh, there was a lot of uh, activity going on at UVA, at William & Mary. Um, and so she really thought that if anybody was serious about historical archaeology, uh, uh, going to one of the Virginia universities was the place to be. And, uh, you know, obviously I had to take, figure out how to do methods. And I took a field school uh, with John Cavallo, who is a well-known um, uh, archaeologist in New Jersey. Uh, and so I did a field school in Cape May. And it was pretty cool because uh, field school covered, you know, phase one, two, and three methodologies um, on the beach site right outside of Cape May uh, that included uh, occupations from the late archaic all the way through the late woodland. So uh, even though I was uh, didn't wind up doing uh, pre-contact archaeology, it was a great introduction to to the methods and that time period, because after college, I wound up doing uh, cultural resource management for a couple of years um, before graduate school. And so having that in my back pocket, that experience was really uh, useful. So for graduate school, I, I went to William & Mary. I uh, came to William & Mary first as an MA student before they had a PhD program. And so I came to William & Mary, it was my first choice school. Um, and uh, we had a really great cohort of students at the time. Um, many of them are still in archeology span today and we all keep in touch. Um, and I got to work with Norm Barca, uh, Marley Brown, Katie Bragdon, who are some of our professors that we had at the time. Um, and it was a really uh, a great experience. And uh, then after grad, after my, I uh, finished my coursework, uh, I got a job working for Colonial Williamsburg. Marley Brown hired me there as a project archaeologist. And so I got pretty busy doing work for Colonial Williamsburg uh, and wound up staying there for a much longer period than I expected. The funny thing about it is that, you know, I came from New Jersey and I was expecting to come for a two year master's program. And that was in fall of 97 and I've never left. So uh, it's funny how that wound up working out. Um, but so, yeah, so after I finished my master's, um, then, you know, immediately I started thinking about a PhD program and Dr. Barca uh, was encouraging me at that point to pursue a PhD and um, uh, William and Mary was an obvious choice. Uh, Audrey Horning had recently uh, come to the university and I was interested in working with her um, and so that's what I wound up doing is uh, applying to William and Mary, got in now for the second time for the PhD program and uh, spent another long period of time here um, doing that. And then once I finished my coursework there, I went back to Colonial Williamsburg again as a, uh, as a project archeologist and ultimately you know, uh, getting more and more supervisory roles while I was there. Yeah, so I've been really fortunate in my career to work alongside a lot of really great faculty uh, who've been really you know good mentors to me. You know, uh, 
at, beginning as an MA student, uh, Dr. Barco was really influential on my career. He uh, he brought me to the Caribbean. Uh, I got to work on St. Eustatius. I think I was one of the last William and Mary students to work with Dr. Barco on St. Eustatius. That you know, very well known long term project that he ran there. Uh, he also sent me to St. Martin. Um, myself and Paul Nasca, we went. We were sent there for six weeks to follow up on some research that he had been doing. So that was a you know great fun and a great experience. Uh, it took us to Bermuda where we met Ed Harris and worked on 17th century uh, forts in Bermuda on that project. So that was you know, another tremendous experience. So just gaining this you know, tremendous amount of field work experience uh, with Dr. Barca trusting us to, you know, to do work on his behalf. And then ultimately that led to me working on Guana Island, um, which uh, was a project that Ed Harris and Norm Barca started together in the late 90s. And, um, and ultimately, I inherited when they both left the project and that became my dissertation. Um, the same time I'm doing all this work in the Caribbean, I also had another foot here in the Chesapeake working for Marley Brown at Colonial Williamsburg, um, where I was a project archaeologist. Um, and so I was running projects uh, throughout the historic area and then also having the opportunity to work on sites outside the historic area that were really important to in Chesapeake archaeology. I got to work on a couple different sites within uh, the Martins Hundred Settlement, which was uh, really exciting. And at the time, Colonial Williamsburg had a cooperative agreement with the National Park Service. So we were doing work at Jamestown. I worked along the shoreline survey that uh, Colonial Williamsburg there, did there, as well as along the parkway, Appomattox Courthouse. So a lot of different places uh, through that relationship that I that I had at Colonial Williamsburg that, that Marley brought me into. And then in the academically in the classroom, you know, I was, I'd been taking classes with Audrey Horning and Mary Voigt uh, uh, and later Michael Blakey, um, all you know really influential uh, on my career and the kind of work that I that I try to do today and the kind of things that I try to teach my students at Longwood. And so uh, it's interesting how often I reflect back on my graduate school, maybe because it composed such a long period of my life, um, that, uh, that uh, I think back on the, my classroom exercises and what we were taught, classroom discussions. I go through my notes as a graduate student, and those really help to inform my lectures that I'm writing now for the students at Longwood. And uh, so it's kind of been funny since I've been at Longwood these last two and a half, three years, uh, I've been revisiting a lot of the, these old memories uh, pretty regularly because, you know, I'm thinking about uh, anthropology again as a student, um, but instead of being in a, a, the student side of the classroom and now at the front of the classroom um, and thinking about that. And I have to say another really influential couple faculty members were Rich and Sally Price. Uh, I got to TA for them uh, a number of times and they were really generous with their time, with their resources. Um, uh, I've worked as the book reviews editor for the New West Indian Guide. Um, I was the assistant, not the editor. Uh, they were the editors. And so, you know, that was great experience also to see all this literature coming in. And they were on sabbatical in Martinique. So, you know, all that information was coming into me first. And so I got to, you know, I just sat in their office, closed the door and read all these books as they, they arrived. So I really got a great education uh, through that relationship as well. And I, you know, part of what's, I think, made me successful in my job is not only do I have a, a lot of experience in archaeology, but the fact that I uh, took classes from and TA'd for cultural anthropologists um, in a small program like Longwood's, you got to be able to do a lot of different things, uh, including teach across disciplines that way and, and really be able to uh, offer students a full field approach. I'm pretty confident in my shovel tossing abilities. Um, so I, I feel pretty good about that. And oftentimes uh, in lighter moments in the field, the crew, the various crews that I've worked on over the years, we would have little informal competitions of how far we could actually shovel toss. So I was getting up there uh, pretty far. So I feel pretty good about that. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, for those of you who don't know, you know, that, you know, the ability to, you know, you know, shovel dirt out of my all, the, you know, a long distance into a screen instead of just dumping it right, right on top of the screen. So I was getting, you know, 
15, 16, 20 feet pretty regularly. My favorite tool in archaeology is probably, uh, you know, a split spoon probe. Um, so it helps me better understand and assess stratigraphy and develop strategies for how to uh, uh, move through a project, how to investigate whether what kind of features we're looking at. And so just having that little bit of extra information, it's, it's you know, just a small probe, but uh, it gives a lot of information that helps with planning quite a bit. Probably uh, SHA is probably my favorite conference, um, uh, in, in part because there's so many people now that have come through uh, Williamsburg, either through the college or through uh, Colonial Williamsburg, that are now working elsewhere. So it is does really function as a place where you can get together with old friends that you otherwise don't get to see the rest of the year.